Surprise, motherfucker, here we go, it's Johnny Blumkin with a brand new show. No guessing games or other contests, but the songs and skits and lots of content. The Reverend is here to stimulate your brain with an all-out comedy cavalcade. Some of it's brand new, some of it's older clips, but we guarantee that you'll think it's the shit. Just park your rear, kick back, and relax for some entertainment via audio track. So without any further ado, Johnny Blumkin Presents is here for you. Johnny Blumkin Presents. Johnny Pumpkin presents. Hello, we are not available now. Please leave your name and phone number after the beep. We will return your call. Hello, this is Grandpa. Don't panic, but I am having a little bit of chest pain and I cannot find my nitro pills. I think I may have left them at your house when I was there for dinner yesterday. I need you to go and take a look in the bathroom where I might have taken it out of my pocket while I was washing my hands after defecating. Please call me back. Because... <coughs> Please call me back immediately because the pain is intensifying and I'm not sure if I should call 911. I think the battery is broken in my life alert and I feel... <coughs> <coughs> oh, my chest is getting tighter, and, and, oh, oh, God, I just lost control of my bowels. Call me. Good morning, sister. I've been a bad girl. Really? Well, tell me all about it. I've been very bad. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> Penance. Take it. Take that dick. Take it. She'll fucking love this cock. Take it. Oh shit, hang on, I gotta go do something. <clears throat> Congregation of Emo Jesus may be seated. A reading from the book of Blumpkin. I remember when steel-cut oats became all the rage, and then every restaurant that was doing breakfast was rushing to put that on their menu. All so that the hipster douchebag millennials could be like, Oh, have you tried steel-cut oats? You know, they're better for you. They're so much better than regular oats because, you know, there's more fiber and it's better to regulate your glucose and stuff like that. Well, here's the thing. Uh, They taste the fucking same. I'm not worried about dietary fiber. And uh, I don't have diabetes, so I don't really give a shit about regulating my glucose like that. What you're doing is coming up with something that's all the rage and then you're acting like it's better than just the regular version of it is. When you don't have to. It's just ridiculous. It's another fucking thing for you to get people to come into your dumb restaurant and charge $3 a bowl for 25 cents worth of fucking oatmeal. You pieces of shit. It's comparable to when KY Jelly eventually came out with their warming gel. And I thought, what is the point of this? And I tried it. And guess what? All it does is just make my dick warm. That's it. But what's the point of that? Because vaginas are warm by nature to start out with. So unless you're fucking an Eskimo out in the wild or a corpse, you don't have to worry about making it warm inside of there. And sure, they're like, well, the warming gel creates better blood flow and could possibly increase your orgasm. No, if you know what the fuck you're doing, you don't need a magic jelly inside of your pussy to make your orgasm better. You need somebody with a dick or a set of fingers or a tongue to know what the fuck they're doing. And as for the warming portion of it all, you know, I can tell you from experience, it almost gets too warm. Not like friction heat, but it's like slightly uncomfortable warm because it doesn't feel normal. It's like you're fucking somebody in the Oregon Trail days that's dying of yellow fever. It's just too much warm. I know what a vagina's like. I don't need you to increase the temperature inside of it or at least make me think that it's warmer than it is just to make me feel better. I'm inside of a vagina. It's like the best place to be ever with your penis.
Hello? Hi. Hi. Hey, it's Eric. Hi. What are you doing? Um, playing a game with my family. <laughs> what game? What? Uh, name game? The name game. Dude, Chuck. What? You play, play, use the name Chuck. What? Chuck. Hold on. I... Yes, okay. What? Chuck. Use the name Chuck if you're playing the name game. Why? Because it's funny. Just try it. Okay. Who is it? Eric LaRouge. <laughs> okay. I want to snort beach sand out of your butt crack like cocaine with a $20 bill when you slap me on the ass. Sure. That is awesome. I'm <laughs> so glad that you're up for that. Oh, okay. Also, will you snowball me? With chocolate syrup. We can make a sundae. Okay. God, you're just so you're so delightfully positive about all this. Yeah, why not? That's awesome. Will you, will you say Jesus loves me? <laughs> Jesus loves me. Sinner! If your personal life is not what you want it to be, then listen to me. The Love Guru. Today on The Love Guru, we're going to discuss something that I get a great many letters about. Confidence. Many of my fans are men who are so broken down from modern dating culture that they have no idea how to function when it comes to meeting women or maintaining a relationship. To assist them, I have compiled this list of 10 ways that confidence can lead to success romantically. Number one, the drive to start things. Confident people start things. They are not shy about striking up a conversation. Say, for example, that you want to compliment a woman, but today's social climate indicates that most of them will yell at you for not asking consent to talk to them because they're feminists or are on the spectrum. Don't let that scare you. Just tell her how nice her breasts look in that blouse. Eventually, you will build up a tolerance to the pain of being slapped or pepper sprayed. Number two, the ability to stand up for oneself. Confidence allows you to stand up for yourself in a fair and consistent manner. Otherwise, you may find yourself unheard or unfairly treated. So if a woman comments that she thinks you're ogling her, get angry and say, How dare you, madam? I find it very egotistical for you to assume I'd be so uncouth. When she inevitably apologizes, take her out to lunch, buy her an extravagant meal, and then ask to finger bang her in the restaurant bathroom. A confident person would. Number three, the ability to say no. Confident people have the ability to say no where appropriate. They do not let people talk them into things that make them uncomfortable. So when a butt-ugly woman says hi to you at the bar, tell her you aren't interested in interspecies dating and to go back to SeaWorld. She may cry, but at least you will have stood up for yourself and been confident. Number four, the ability to say yes. And at the same time, confident individuals say yes to opportunity, like your female co-worker asking you out to lunch. Sure, she's Bit like a linebacker and has hands like Bill Lambert, but she probably doesn't get many offers. And she has a pretty face. So go with it. She'll do all the extra dirty stuff that attractive women don't because she doesn't get all the opportunity that others do. Number five, confidence overcomes fear. Lack of confidence can lead to paralysis from fear. Fear of failure, fear of what others think, like wearing condoms. Huh? Don't be a pussy. I mean, come on, I can't even feel anything when I wear one. Just tell her that you feel disrespected by her request and that she should trust you because you've been tested and had all of your shots, even if you haven't. Number six, believe in yourself. Self-confidence means believing in you. I mean, just look at Gene Simmons. He's uglier than a bowling shoe, and he married Shannon Tweed. And that was after he allegedly banged thousands of women and not caught the herp. If he can do it, you can do it. And you don't even need to paint yourself up like an ass clown and pretend that you know how to play bass guitar. Number seven, set the bar high enough. Confident individuals set the bar high and they aim high, even though models seem unattainable. Pursue them. 
because most of them are vapid, soulless husks with daddy issues, and that's why they seek the constant attention of others, because they are not confident. Number 8. Stretch your limits. Confidence lets you know your limits and test them. By stretching your limits, you increase them, like how long you can be choked before passing out or holding your breath before your climax. Try it. It feels really, really good. I mean, why else would David Carradine have gone out that way? And don't worry about what the TV told you about your brain not getting enough oxygen back in the 1990s. Huh? Exhale hard. Don't breathe in and keep thrusting. When you finally pop, it will feel incredible, I promise you. Number 9. Confidence asks questions. Confidence allows you to ask questions even when others are silent. Confidence even lets you ask her to let you eat grape jelly out of her ass. Sure, she'll say, that's kind of gross. Why would you ask me that? I'm not that kind of girl. You say, hey, I'm just asking because I care. Now go and freshen up and I will go to the fridge and get some Welch's and then I will show you what it's all about. You'll never get the chance to ask unless you speak up and make the inquisition. So ask! Finally, number 10. Believe in winning. Confident people believe in success, and more importantly, they believe in their ability to succeed. So even though you didn't pull out and your lady friend has a late period, be confident in your math and concentrate on winning. Manifest the blood flow. Envision yourself standing over her and bragging when the pregnancy test comes up negative and say, I told you so, bitch. Remember, confidence leads to success. Believe in yourself. Believe in your skills. And most importantly, use a fake name on dating apps so that the authorities or the courts cannot find you. Until next time, I am the Love Guru.